Yo, Craig Wright is a liar and a fraud. He's a perjurer and a forger. An all-around <laughs> dude. The judge in this most recent case stated as much. He thought he was going to have an easy time playing big bank, take little bank. But Cope will form like Voltron to challenge and ultimately put an end to his nonsense. Now look, I've been trying to tell y'all, but some of you wouldn't listen. Craig Wright is faker than fraud. And so is his BSV blockchain. It's about time his stands start to acknowledge that fact. Much like Drake fans need to come to grips with the fact that K. Dot Molly whopped his ass. <laughs> uh, anyway, this is a pretty interesting story. So rock with me. The judge in this latest case held in a UK court, Judge Meller, I think is his name, didn't pull any punches in his ruling against Craig Wright. As my late grandmother used to say, the judge called him everything but a child of God. It's kind of funny. The judge called him a liar, called into question his level of cleverness, and ruled unambiguously that Craig Wright is not now nor never was Satoshi Nakamoto. Let's take a look at some of this judge's quotes from the Coindesk article. I'm entirely satisfied that Dr. Wright lied to the court extensively and repeatedly, the judge said. Most of his lies related to the documents he had forged, which purported to support his claim. It's pretty strong stuff. This Protos article characterizes it like this. A UK judge has branded litigious computer scientist Craig Wright, an arrogant liar who frequently uses technobabble and isn't nearly as clever as he thinks he is. The article continues. The arrogance he displayed was at odds with what comes through from Satoshi's writing. In short, in his writing and attitude, Dr. Wright just doesn't sound like or act like Satoshi Nakamoto. Now this is interesting for people who don't follow this kind of thing. In 2008, Satoshi Nakamoto published a white paper uh, that speaks to what his intentions were as far as Bitcoin and this electronic peer-to-peer -peer money. Further, there are email and other types of communications between Satoshi and others who helped get Bitcoin launched. And Craig Wright just does not personify any of that. And it came out in court. Going back to the Coindesk article, Dr. Wright is not the person who adopted or operated under the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto in the period 2008 to 2011. Third, Dr. Wright is not the person who created the Bitcoin system. And fourth, he is not the author of the initial versions of the Bitcoin software. Again, powerful stuff and it's unequivocal. You'll see why this is important later. If Buddy thought that the most he had to lose was an embarrassing ruling, he's got another thing coming. Now he has to worry about COPA's legal and other costs, the injunctive relief that COPA is seeking, and if that weren't enough, he could be facing perjury charges. Going back to the Coindesk article, Meller, the judge, also concluded that the issue of injunctive relief, which is a legal remedy to stop a defendant from doing something, will be argued at a form of order hearing that will be appointed after the judgment has been handed down. So he's not ruling on this yet. Post judgment, um, they're going to they're gonna speak on um, injunctions. Anyhow, COPA said it will seek several injunctions to prevent Wright from claiming to be Nakamoto and taking Bitcoin developers to court again. In March, the judge imposed a worldwide freezing order on 6 million British pounds, which is about $7.6 million worth of Wright's assets to ensure that he couldn't move them offshore or evade costs from the COPA trial. And according to the order, COPA's costs for the case back in March amounted to about 6.7 million pounds at the time. So he's already looking like it's going to be, a, you know, closer to $10 million by the time the court gets done with him. Finally, in this Coindesk article, 
It says, to defend the fiction that he's Satoshi, Wright has committed perjury and forgery to an extraordinary extent, Copa said in his closing arguments. Copa also warned the Alliance will ask to refer the files of this case to the UK prosecutors for, quote, consideration of prosecution for the offenses of perjury and perverting the course of justice. So they're not just satisfied with him losing the case, uh, proving that he's not Satoshi Nakamoto. They're trying to press the issue and press the issue hard. And you'll see why that probably is um, when we get a little bit further into the story. So why was this trial even necessary? Well, first, we have to talk about Satoshi giving us the gift and the curse. It was great that he gave us Bitcoin anonymously, but in doing so, he created the conditions for false pretenders to attempt to lay claim to his invention. Case in point, Craig Ray. Now, this is my personal opinion based on my interpretation of the evidence. Craig Wright is foul, yo. He hatched a plan to steal Satoshi's identity in order to claim that he's the rightful owner of all things Bitcoin. And unfortunately for us, he had enough money to be a legal pain to many in the Bitcoin developer community who did not possess Wright's high level of resources and his low level of character. So let's read this other article in Protos. It says, no matter what you think of Craig Wright's contentious self-identification as Satoshi Nakamoto, he still amassed one of the largest patent portfolios in the crypto industry. Established in 2015, his in-chain, that's the company he owns, his in-chain employs some 260 workers who have been filing thousands of patent applications and intellectual property registrations. The article goes on. Forbes' Michael... De Michael Del Castillo released current figures on his patent collection. 800 grants, 3,000 pending. Already widely regarded as a legal troll against the Bitcoin core developers, Wright could soon become a patent troll as well. Wright is an aggressive plaintiff and wields a fortune to compensate high-powered attorneys around the globe. He even legally harassed the lead maintainer of Bitcoin core and second successor to Satoshi Nakamoto, Vladimir Vanderlaan, so much so that Vanderlaan quit Bitcoin development altogether. Now, basically what this means is this cat's trying to get legal standing as the owner of Bitcoin, the inventor of Bitcoin, to basically file suit around the world to extract resources or basically extract a toll from everybody who's ever done anything with Bitcoin. Um, it's insane when you think about it. Now, if you're really into blockchain and you're a true believer, this is probably turning your stomach and you're probably thinking, thank God for COPA. Well, what is COPA and why does it exist? Well, let's go directly to COPA's website and see. They describe themselves as follows. The Cryptocurrency Open Patent Alliance is a nonprofit community of like-minded people and companies formed to encourage the adoption and advancement of cryptocurrency technologies and to remove patents as a barrier to growth and innovation. COPA acknowledges that cryptocurrency technology is built on the collaborative efforts of a community made up of de developers, engineers, and designers. The success of cryptocurrency is a direct result of the community coming together to build and develop upon existing technologies for the benefit of all. We believe COPA will help this happen. They go on to say, Crypto organizations have filed for hundreds of patents on cryptocurrency technology and continue to do so in large numbers, causing some concerns. One, locking up foundational cryptocurrency technology in patents stifles innovation and the adoption of these technologies in new and improved applications. Two, while patents are useful defensively, and this is important, and can serve as a lawsuit deterrent, misguided and offensive use of patents by bad actors threatens the growth and free availability of cryptocurrency technologies. Many crypto companies do not own patents and are unable to adequately deter or defend against these bad actors. COPA provides an open patent strategy to address these concerns. Anyone can join and benefit from COPA, regardless of whether they have patents or not. There is no barrier to entry. Members can be individuals, startups, small companies, or large corporations. 
This is how COPA works. COPA members pledge to never use their crypto technology patents against anyone, except for defensive reasons, effectively making their patents freely available for all to use. It's a pretty interesting concept. Well, now that we know what COPA is, you might be wondering who COPA is. So let's take a look at their members. When we look at the logos associated with COPA's top tier membership, there are three that stick out. Block, led by Jack Dorsey, obviously the Twitter founder. MicroStrategy, run by Michael Saylor, and we know he's a Bitcoin maxi. And then there's Coinbase, founded by CEO Brian Armstrong. So these are some heavy players um, in the industry. Uh, and when you think about it, it would take heavy hitters like this to fight back against somebody like Craig Wright, who had pretty deep pockets to begin with. Now we get to the part of the video where I say, I told you so. I started calling out this fake Satoshi back in 2021 when I started investigating one of several 51% attacks against Bitcoin SV, which led me to his founder, Craig Wright, and his claim to be Satoshi pursuing Satoshi's vision. In total, I did three videos on Craig Wright and Bitcoin SV. Bitcoin SV is dead, the BSV hive, and Bitcoin SV false pretender. You can check them out on the channel. I probably would have only done one video, but all these Craig Wright and Bitcoin SV stands came from my neck in the comments. So they had to get that work. Maybe now, after all this, they're ready to stop coping and start dealing with the reality that their king is a fraud. For most people in Craig's Wright's position, this would be the end of the story. But somehow, I just don't think he's going to let it go. When you read his bio, you see that he fashions himself a modern day renaissance man, although he sounds like a megalomaniac. Combine that with the sentiments underpinning his recent tweet, and you realize this is not the end of the story. Well, I actually learned a few things researching this story, and I find it pretty interesting, if not amusing. Hopefully you did too. Until next time, fam. Holla.